in this video, we'll go over how to use basic GPT formulas and the different parameters you can um, utilize with them. So let's jump straight into it. First thing you can do is select the cell, type equal GPT. And then as you can see, you'll have a little list of GPT formulas that you can use. Let's start with the most simple one. If you put the parentheses here, it will show you that you have five possible parameters. You have the prompt, basically what you want the cell to do, the value, the temperature, the model, and bypass cache. The temperature is basically how creative uh, the AI is going to be. The model is basically which model uh, you want to use in this cell generation. Bypass cache is if you want to force the recomputation of the cell. If you want more info, you can click on this little arrow and you'll get the documentation on each parameter. The most important parameters anyway are prompt and value. So we'll start with prompt, a very simple prompt. We'll say, say hello. If we do that, it will just return hello. Okay, perfect. Uh, now we'd like to add some other data from another cell. So if we put two adjectives here, in cell D1 and D2, we'll say ironic and funny. We'll say here, GPT, say hello in a way that is, and then we'll reference the cell, D1. You see it highlights the cell here. You can put a comma or you can use an ampersand here, D1. All right, so we'll do that. And as you can see, it will return, oh joy, an ironic message. An ironic salutation. If you drag and drop here, you'll have a funny greeting. All right. Perfect. Let's move on to GPT list. So GPT list is a way to output a list instead of a single cell. So we'll come here, select GPT list. And as you can see, you can also input a value. So reference other cells, temperature, model, or bypass cache. So here we'll ask G GPT list to give us 10 fruits, 10 tropical fruits. All right. Perfect. Now we'll see another thing is that you can reference a value from a single cell, but you can also reference multiple cells. So let's say summarize the values and we'll put A1 to A10. And it will explain what the cells contain. So here, it just returns everything. Okay, perfect. One thing we can do as well is drag and drop. So we say, hey, do an IQ, and we'll put A1. On the fruit, then we can drag and drop here very simply, and we'll generate haikus for each tropical fruit. If we want, um, so this is for the Gypsy list. Uh, GPT list uh, formula. Let's move on to GPT table. GPT table is like GPT lists, but instead of outputting on multiple rows, it will output on multiple rows and columns. So let's try GPT table and say fruits and their nutritional values. Let's say 10 fruits. Again, you can input multiple values, the temperature, the model, and the cache. So here it generated this big table. Let's move on to GPT Translate. GPT Translate will, instead of taking a prompt, will take a language. So we'll say, hey, I want to translate to Spanish. Okay, okay. and then we'll translate each IQ. 
So we're going to put B1 here. Uh, to translate the haiku to Spanish. We can drag and drop to translate every single haiku. Finally, we have GPT Web. GPT Web is a special formula that gives you access to the latest news. So for example, if you need um, the result of a sports match or some financial data, GPT Web will simply pull it from the web instead of using its training data. So this is useful in the case that you don't know if there's going to be, um, if the data you want is in the training set of the AI or it's very late, very new news. This is useful in the case that you want uh, data that is recent. All right, so this is all for uh, the basic GPT formulas and we'll talk in the next video on how to control them, how to save the values and other settings.